And hello out there, everybody. What's going on? This is Miho from Too Close to Call, and this is a Here They Come podcast series where we're wrapping up kind of our Sixers talk for this past year. Now that we've had a little bit of time to breathe and decompress from a devastating Game 7. I'm packed, and I've gotten over it. Uh, not really, sort of, kind of. So in the last post game of Game 7 Pags, I slash we overreacted just a little bit, apparently, because we found out about 48 hours later that Brett Brown will be returning as head coach for your 76ers. Yep, and after taking a couple days to think about it, it's the right Brett proved in the last series that he could make adjustments and he does need a little bit more time with this core to create a uh, championship caliber team. I don't know, man. I'm still on the fence because I think I would have taken a hard run at Jay Wright from Villanova. Dude, Jay Wright's not going anywhere. Jay Wright has the life. He's never leaving. He's still in Philly, the place he grew up. And he's going to have a top 10 program forever. Well, that's why it's like, well, now just coach your pro team. Everybody's going to love you. They're going to give you nothing but runway. Basically, you're going to have, if Brett Brown's getting six years, you're going to have at least three to five to figure it out because you are the hometown guy. They're going to double your salary. You clearly don't have to work as much. We've seen the transition begin to become more popular as in, John Beeline wasn't going anywhere because he's been to three Final Fours in how many years and continues to pound out programs in Michigan, and he just took one of the shittiest jobs in the NBA. So I don't know if behind the scenes, I bet you they did, Pags. I bet you they made a phone call or two to him or his wife or his agent or something to just gauge if he would have any interest because you're right, man. As we kind of went through the names That was really the only one where on paper I was like, okay, if you were to say you're going to give me that, I'm fucking jumping all over it. There's no doubt I would jump at the fact that Jay Wright, he's a proven coach, and the players would love him, that's for sure. But if I'm Jay Wright, I take that call, sure. Think about it for a little while, sure. But I'm dealing with these freaking prima donna NBA players where I'm like, I'd rather just have a couple kids that are – freshmen sophomores and then they leave me i'll let the prima donnas deal with themselves i'm thinking players parents and college and all that bullshit that comes with 18 and 19 year olds getting in trouble in class and stuff can be talked out of going to the nba where oh hey you remember that whole compliance thing yeah don't worry about it and like you (laughs) said man with these kids coming out nowadays and villanova had a little bit of a down year this year it's just like Ah, God, I don't know. And I can't believe I'm even saying that because I'm not a Villanova guy or a Jay Wright guy. It's just I felt like that name could have been the one where it would have opened some eyes and some doors. But, hey, if he said no, ultimately I think Elton Brand made the right move because I really didn't want one of the Van Gundys or, like, Mike Brown or Mark Jackson or one of those guys. Having said that – I do think Brett Brown's seat is extremely warm, if not hot, going into next year. And if there's a little bit of a stumble, I don't know how long of a leash they're going to give him. If he thought his seat was hot now, it's going to be boiling next year. Because now you've had two second round exits. Gotten a little further, winning two more games. But now it's like, okay, dude. Elton Brand's going to boost your bench, make your bench a little bit better, hopefully re-sign Jimmy, maybe get one of these other free agents, maybe bring back Tobias. You can't keep saying, well, we only play 20-some games together. That's not going to happen next year. I was going to say, his main excuse is going to be the excuse again next year, which is no continuity to the roster. I mean, the guy coached three different teams last year over the course of 80 games he coached each one for like 30 games total or something like that and here we are again looking at some contracts and what we got going into next year I mean as of right now literally the only guaranteed contracts are the books are Joel Embiid Ben Simmons Zaire Smith and Jonah Bolden everybody else is either on an option that will probably be declined or going to be a free agent or non-guaranteed contracts player options but 
reading through this list, man, there's going to be a crazy amount of turnover again if, I guess, they don't just pay all these guys, who I assume every one of them is going to want to raise. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, they're all going to want something. They're not going to just take the hometown discount, if you will. If I have my pick, I would want J.J. as a six-man coming off the bench. Try to get another shooting guard, whether that's Danny Green or some one of these other free agents. But I guess what I'm getting at is, what are your expectations this offseason? It's got to be two stars slash two superstars. Whether Does that's that count as Jimmy Butler? I was going to say whether that's bringing back Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris or two other names, but you're going to have the money for two of those types of individuals. And depending on who it is and what you're targeting, I know my ultimate golden goose this offseason, which I think has very low potential, is Clay Thompson. No doubt. I think Clay Thompson is the exact kind of piece they need outside of Butler and Beaton Simmons. I think Clay Thompson is Tobias Harris times three with the exact player, that defender slash three point shooter, wing shooter. It's exactly who they need to fit their offense. But I don't foresee him leaving Golden State. But if he does, I really don't think he's going to be coming east to Philadelphia either which leaves that next tier of names such as Tobias Harris, Chris Middleton, people along those lines. And that's where I kind of look at all those names and go, oh, man, I don't really like, I guess just bring Toby back because he's been here. And you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just frustrating to kind of make those decisions. And ultimately, I do think you just have to bring Butler back. Even by the end of a potential five-year contract, I think that could be a little bit of an overpayment. I do think you need to find someone who can give quality minutes for Joel because it's shown that nor do they want to play him 30 minutes in a game, especially in the regular season. Once we get into the playoffs, we need somebody to be able to run 10, 12 minutes out there and not have a minus whatever we had with Monroe and Bobby. Well, there's your backup question that nobody may think about, but... Due to the friendship of Bobby and Toby and literally them, you know, both not being kind of from America, do you think any of their play would suffer if you split them up? Like if the Sixers only sign Harris and not Bobby, do you think they would literally miss each other and not play as well? I don't know, man. That was something I was thinking of, too, because you're right, man. I mean, like you mentioned, J.J., Boban, Mike Scott, Amir Johnson— Forkan, Maz, TJ McConnell, all of these guys are just falling off. And I do agree with you, all of the bigs will probably not return. Maybe Mike Scott I'd like to see back, JJ potentially, and that leaves, you know, the Zaire Smith, the first round pick who we didn't get a lot out of, and then the pick probably at number 24 this year, hopefully being part of the 8-9 rotation. How about this? I read an article that said Vucevic is going to be looking for tons of money and nobody's willing to pay him that. Would you give him some money to be like, hey, be Joel's backup? Dude, you know I'm a Vukovic guy. I think he's a max deal and a stud, to be honest with you. If you signed him, he'd have to play 40 minutes alongside Joel Embiid. He's too good at that point to do that, so I don't foresee it. I think it could be a name. I don't know, man. We need ourselves like a poor man's Brooks Lopez dropping 10 goddamn threes out there after how many years. So who's kind of that guy that's been around for four to six years now that has expanded his game to stay in the league? What about Blake Griffin? (laughs) Blake Griffin? Oh, man, I don't know. He's making a ton of money, too. He'd be a good ad. If you see Simmons, Griffin, Embiid, and somebody, I don't know. I don't think that fits in too well. If I'm having my picks, I'm going all in on Kawhi. I know it's not going to happen because he's a better Jimmy Butler for you there. Kawhi's going to LA. Durant, it sounds like he's going to the Knicks. I wouldn't be surprised if Durant resigns with Golden State. Kyrie, obviously, if you're willing to say, Ben, you're not going to have the ball in your hands all these times. I don't think Kyrie's happening. Kemba might be another choice there. He can shoot. He can put up 50 a night if you need him to. Personally, Pags, I think they just run it back with their starting five. I I do, too, and I think that's fine. Zaire Smith would be six. 24 overall pick would be seven. And then eight and nine is Mike Scott and a backup big type of rotation, I think, is what we're looking at next year. 
I saw a mock draft with 24 going Ty Jerome for the Virginia Cavaliers, and I would be all in for that because that dude could shoot it. You put him in, he could handle the ball. I would be all for that. I think my, like I mentioned, ultimately I would sign Jimmy to the max, try to sign Clay Thompson. If you don't, I probably would revert back to Tobias and probably try to get him a little bit under the maximum. His last deal was, I think, four for 64. So you may not have to go to the full max, but it's one of those things, again, where he's only 26 and Jimmy's already 29. So if you're going five years with Jimmy, that's into age 35 and... Yeah, I don't think you're going to completely fall off, but I don't know if he's going to be a superstar still in five years. Well, you're hoping at that point Embiid and Simmons are good enough that they can handle the team and Jimmy's just that veteran presence to give you a big shot when you need it. Absolutely, man. But as we mentioned, it's going to be another ridiculous offseason with potentially a lot of turnover, maybe not. Even if a lot of people come back, it's not going to be a nowhere near the same amount of money it's going to be something to look forward to i don't know which one's first in the nba the draft or free agency but either way the knicks or lakers didn't win the lottery so hey we are i guess a little bit of good news right after game seven absolutely zion is not going to be in the east and it's going to be a good time john morant's not going to be in the east coast it looks like we're going to have to deal with rj barrett and potentially i'm seeing the guy from virginia as well going number four their top dog. I can't remember his name. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the Here They Come pod. Like we said, not a ton happening this past week outside of Brett Brown returning. And ultimately, after exhaling and regrouping, it does seem to be the right move to at least give him one more year. Depending on where this roster's at, it's still a lot of variables going on with Elton, the roster, and Brett. But once they kind of finalize this, I, I do think either way, this offseason is going to implement the core for the next two to three to four years. I don't think they're going to be going out and signing people to one-year deals. So whoever they choose, man, I think this is going to be the next group that we're going to have to try to run for it. Yeah, and it's going to be fun to follow, and we'll come with you with podcasts when we have something to talk about. Hopefully, we got a lot of exciting stuff on the horizon. That's it, everybody. Thanks for listening. As always, give us a review. Follow us on Instagram, social media. Every little bit helps. We appreciate it. We will talk to you pending breaking news by your Sixers. Later, guys. Peace. One, two, three, four, five, Sixers.